If you're planning on picking up one of AMD's Ryzen 7000 series CPUs, like the 7600X or 7900X, what sort of cooler do you need to pair these with? Will an air cooler just about manage, or will you have to splash out on an AIO? Well, thanks to CyberPower, I have the chance to test just that, so let's jump in. I thought that I would test both of these chips in both CPU intensive tasks like video editing, 3D modeling, and of course also for gaming. I tracked the CPU temperatures, the performance over extended runs, and also the power consumption as I found a, a few interesting things there. I'll start with the CPU load, specifically Cinebench R23 multi-thread on loop. Just looking at the thermals and the power, you can see that the 7900X is struggling a lot with the air cooling. It's running an average of 190 watts with the Corsair H100i Elite, the 240mm AIO, versus just 160 watts with this Coolermaster single tower air cooler. The temperatures aren't all that much difference. I mean, 95 degrees Celsius for air, or 92.6 degrees Celsius for water, but that's because even the 240mm AIO is throttling that chip. The 7900X should be able to draw 230 watts, so 190 is a considerable hit. It is worth noting that that is the sustained average over a 10 minute run, but even then the peak wasn't that much higher, and the performance isn't quite at the same level as some of the other reviewers that have tested these chips. I'll show you the performance in a second though, but taking a look at the 7600X, that one doesn't see much throttle. Well, okay, the socket power limit is 142 watts for that chip, but again, I'm averaging more like 115. That is the average over the run though, so that's a little bit more expected. Still, there wasn't that much of a difference in the temperatures overall, nor really in the power consumption. Now, switching to the performance numbers, you can see how much the 7900X throttled here. Over a thousand points, or about 4% slower, and the 240mm AIO result is already a further thousand points lower than most of the other reviewers' results who've tested this chip. That's not great, although I think with a bit of tuning that can be improved. If you want to see how that ends up working out, then make sure you hit the subscribe button and turn the bell notification icon on, but I mean, compare that to the 7600X, which does see a little performance hit, but not quite as much. It's around 3.5% slower compared to, like I said, a little bit over 4 on the 7900X. So it seems like both chips, at least on the CPU you know, specific loads, could benefit from much better cooling. When it comes to gaming though, well, your CPU doesn't really get used all that much. The vast majority of the work being done is by your graphics card, with most games barely bothering your CPU cores at all. For this test, I'm using Shadow of the Tomb Raider, as it has an excellent built-in benchmark that's very easy to run continuously and therefore offer consistent testing across these different configurations. These ran for right around 20 minutes each, and like you might expect, there's not that much of a difference in the, the power consumption, although a, a pretty big difference in temperatures. The 7900X averaged pretty much the same power consumption between the two runs, but the AIO managed to drop the temperatures by almost 15 degrees Celsius. That is a massive difference, and I would say well worth the extra cash for the better cooler. The 7600X actually had a rather interesting result. It actually drew a little less power. Not a whole lot, it's only like 7 watts difference, but it is lower and under 60 degrees Celsius, which is fantastic, especially considering that it's right next to an RTX 4090 pumping 450 watts of heat into the case right below it. Now, taking a look at the performance results, as you might expect, there really isn't much of a difference here. Technically speaking, the 240mm runs do all add a, a touch more performance, like 1 or 2 FPS, but functionally speaking, it may as well be the same performance. Even down to the 1% lows, it's primarily a GPU-bound task, or at very least, 
it's normally not limited by the CPU thermals and all core performance. Even in CPU bound titles, something like CSGO, that's normally the single threaded performance and latency that limits the FPS, not the all core throughput that's possible and therefore limited by those thermals and you know how cool you can keep your chip. So can you air cool a Ryzen 7000? Well, if you're just gaming, the 7600X can do just fine, even with a basic single tower, single fan cooler like this. You can get better temperatures and possibly even better efficiency with a better cooler, but you don't absolutely need to. I would generally recommend it if you can afford it, but if you're on a more budget setup, it's not that bad. Generally speaking, I don't think anything over a 240mm AIO is worth fitting to the 7600X though, but the bigger brother 7900X? Yeah, I kind of say that the 240mm is the minimum, with maybe a 360mm, especially for CPU specific tasks, being the recommended option. If you're just gaming, you can save your cash and get a standard 240mm like this one, but since you're already spending the big bucks on not only a high-end CPU, but a very expensive, at least at the moment, motherboard, uh, a higher-end 360mm cooler likely won't make that much of a dent in your budgets and could offer even better cooling potential, potentially better performance, at least in CPU-specific tasks, and of course better temperatures and therefore longevity too. So that's a quick look at how to cool one of these uh, new Ryzen chips. I think one of the interesting things with these is because of the thicker IHS, the cooler doesn't matter quite as much as you might think. You basically need to be able to draw the heat out of the IHS more than the die itself. Uh, and so while a larger cooler will likely help, you know, there's more thermal mass in say a 360mm cooler, I don't think that it will be that significant of a difference. I think the tuning will be a bit more interesting. So again, stay tuned for that because I'm going to be doing that pretty much right now. Um, otherwise, if you want to see more videos like this one, maybe you want to see videos uh, like comparing how Intel's chips do with these sorts of coolers, feel free to let me know in the comments down below and I'll jump on that as well. Um, but yeah, that's kind of it really. Like I said, if you want to see more videos like this one, you can hit the subscribe button. There's plenty more videos on the end cards you can check out as well. If you want to check out this system from CyberPower or some of the CPUs, I'll leave links in the description for you. And yeah, that's kind of it. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next video.